today we are going to start on chapter 11 and start talking about gases and the different gas laws. There are four measurable quantities of gases and we are going to focus in on pressure in this first video. So how do we measure pressure and how do we convert between all the different units of pressure? So there are four measurable qualities of gases. We are going to look at all four of them along the way. So you have volume, temperature, your number of particles, which yes, is going to bring us back to the mole, and then pressure. Pressure will be the focus of our video tonight. So what is pressure? Pressure is the force per unit area on a surface. So how do we measure force? We use the Newton. Newton is just symbolized by N, and it is our SI unit of force and it is the force that will increase the speed of one kilogram by one meter per second. Now don't worry too much about force. We don't get into a whole lot of force here in chemistry. You will become very familiar though with force in the Newton as you get into physics next year. We also see that pressure exerted on something depends on the volume, the temperature, and the number of molecules present which are those other three measurable quantities that we just saw, and area of contact. So basically, if you have a low area of contact, we have high pressure. Let's look at a couple of devices that we can use to measure pressure. The first one is a barometer. This is a, a device used to measure atmospheric pressure. The barometers we have today, of course, are a little bit more involved than the picture here. We don't have open bottles or open uh, containers of mercury sitting around. Uh, but this is basically a crude example of what a barometer or how a barometer works. This was developed by Evangelista Torricelli. So what you have is you have a tube that has a vacuum at the top so that there's no pressure exerted there. Then you have it filled with mercury. As the atmosphere then pushes down on the mercury in the bowl at the bottom, it would push up into the tube. Less pressure, it's going to fall. And that's where you get that idea of the falling barometer, because uh, our pressure is decreasing in the atmosphere. Another device we can use to measure pressure is a manometer. This is a device used to measure the pressure of an enclosed gas. Because often if we're going to measure a gas, it's going to be stuck in something because otherwise it's willy-nilly floating around and it's hard to contain. So we're going to have some kind of container that's going to hold that gas. So we're going to hook it up to what is often called a U-tube uh, where you can close off one end and open it and it can go into this tube. Now the pressure of the gas then is determined by the difference in heights of mercury on either side of the tube. Again, because there is a vacuum at the top, the pressure of the gas pushes down inside the tube. Remember, if there was no pressure uh, from the gas, then the two sides should be balanced out. However, as the gas pressure comes in, it moves down and pushes up the mercury on the other side. So there are several different units of pressure we can use, and it all depends more on what exactly we are measuring. So if we're using a manometer, or an often a barometer, maybe we'll use millimeters of mercury. So to say how high that mercury has changed, either increased or decreased within the tube. So we could use millimeters of mercury. These are often called tor also, in honor of Torricelli. But they're going to be equal. So it's just basically a name change. Then we can have a Pascal, which is PA. And that is actually our SI unit of pressure. But most often you'll hear about atmospheres, which is shortened to ATM. Now we are going to have to be careful when we talk about atmospheres, because we could talk about atmospheric pressure, which isn't necessarily ATM that we're talking about. So you gotta kinda be careful when we talk here. Um, really use maybe the abbreviations for the unit and then we'll try to write out when we're talking about actual atmosphere. And ATM, or atmospheres in this case, is the sum of all the individual pressures of various gases in the atmosphere itself. So how are all of these related? 
Well, basically, just like we had those numbers for our moles and mass conversions, these would be the same thing. We could make several different conversion factors. So one atmosphere is going to be equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, which also means it would be equal to 760 tor, since a tor is just a name change from millimeters of mercury. And that equals 101,325 pascals, which we could also change to kilopascals. And of course, the difference between pascal and kilopascals is 1,000. So we basically change the comma to a decimal point, and we have 101.325 kilopascals. Now because there are so many different measurements of pressure and pressure can be affected by volume and temperature and how many particles you have, we usually have a standard for temperature and pressure and this is STP standing for standard temperature and pressure. So this is used to compare gases so that if we're comparing one gas to another, uh, we, don't, we take out all those other factors and we compare it at the same exact pressure and temperature. So standard temperature is going to be zero degrees Celsius and standard pressure is going to be one atmosphere. So let's look at doing